All right, section 9.1, we were starting to talk about probabilities. Um, and the last slide that we had done can put all of the uh, probability results that we had come across into one condensed form. We talked about impossible events and certain events. We talked about any probability of any event being between 0 and 1. And uh, we looked at things when they were uh, mutually exclusive. They had nothing in common. Um, and finding it the union of those probabilities is the addition of the two probabilities. Um, or if they do, in fact, have something in common, then we would have to remove the overlap one time. And the last thing had to do with this idea of what we call complements. Um, and that the opposite of an event happening would be 1 minus the probability the event does happen. For example, I don't know why people always do this, but they put the percent of chance of rain, right? So if you look in your phone or, or on a weather app or something like that, they'll say there's a 40% chance of rain. And once it gets to about 40, I start getting a little concerned. I have to remind myself that that means there's a what percent chance of sunshine? 60, or at least a 60% chance that it's not going to rain. Maybe not sunshine, but not going to rain. That's what's going on in number six, is that it's just the 100% or 1 minus that probability. All right, so we're going to do an example with a deck of cards. I always like to give a little bit of background because um, I don't want to assume that everybody has played with decks of cards because that, that, that's very specific, and it might not be that you've actually played much with decks of cards. So we're going to run through a few things. If it's not something that you're terribly familiar with, you might want to jot down a few notes. If it is, then feel free to just take a look and listen. Um, so in a deck of cards, do you know how many cards are in a standard deck? 52. There are 52 cards in a standard deck of cards. Half of them would be how many? It's half of 52. 26. 26 are red and 26 are black. Okay. There are four suits in the deck of cards. Do you know what they are? Spades, Spades and clubs, which are both black, right? The spades and clubs are black, and then diamonds and hearts, which are red. So those make up the 26. Each of the suits of cards, there are four, have how many cards each? 13. It's the same thing as 52 divided by 4. They have 13 cards. Um, the value on the card, I'm going to use the word value because it's not all numbers. Some of them are numbers, and some of them are faces, and some of them are aces. So there's three different kinds of cards specifically. There's cards that have numbers. What's the smallest numbered card? Two. Two. And the highest number? Ten. ten. So all the numbers are between two and ten, right, including the two and the ten. Um, we have three face cards. What are they? Jack. King, queen, jack, or jack, queen, king. Right. And then there's one that's not considered a face card or a number card, truly, and it's the card that is in ace. Um, and depending on the kinds of games you play, you might be playing ace where the ace is actually kind of like acting like a one. Or you might be playing a game where the ace is acting like a number that's bigger than king. Depends on the game. Okay? Um, I think that'll do it for us. Oh, one other thing then. How many of each value card are there? Four. So there's four aces, four kings, four jacks, four tens, four fours, things like that. Okay, everybody good? All right. This question wants us to consider drawing a single card, one card out of that 52 card deck, and determine which of the following are equally likely events. Now, in determining if they're equally likely, we're going to actually find each of the individual probabilities. So on the first one part, it talks about a face card versus not a face card. So we're going to do it for the whole deck. Do you know how many face cards are in the whole deck? Yes, there are 12. There are three Jack, queen, king of each suit, and there's four suits. So that's three times four is 12. So there are 12 out of how many cards total did we say? 52. 52. And, and I recognize that this reduces, um, but it'll be easier to compare it to the not a face card if they're both written over the same denominator, right? It's easier to compare fractions if they have the same denominator. So that's exactly what we're doing here. Not a face card. So if there are 52 cards and 12 of them are face cards, how many are not a face card? 40. 40. And we can get that without even counting up the individual cards. I don't have to figure it out, right? I can subtract. That's the complements thing that we had on the previous slide. Now the question is, are these equally likely to happen? No. How do you know? Yeah, the probabilities are not equal, right? If the probabilities are not equal, then it's not equally likely to happen. So the answer is that they are not equally likely. Are there going to be like any questions that want to include jokers or are we just doing... No, okay. we're going to use a standard card deck without the jokers. Okay. Yes. 
a good question. I hadn't thought about that. All right. Clubs. How many clubs are there? 13. 13. Out of how many cards total? Awesome. How many diamonds are there? Out of hearts and spades. Are these equally likely? Yes. So these are equally likely. Black. How many black cards are there? 26. Out of how many cards total? 52. And how many red? 26. Out of 52. Are these equally likely? Yeah. These are equally likely. All right, this one's got the most uh, different options here. Kings, how many kings are there? Four out of 52. We're writing all of them out of 52, right? Okay, I'm going to stop asking out of 52 then because you guys know that. All right. How many, how many queens? Yep. Jacks? Aces? And if we stopped the question right there, the answer would be? Yes, yes they're equally likely, but we don't. Even cards. So you kind of have 2, 4, 6, 8, and 10, right? Which is 5 cards times 4. So we have 20. How about odd? Yeah, why is it fewer, Shana? Yeah, because we don't include the number 1, so we actually get 3, 5, 7, um, and 9. 3, 5, 7, and 9, I said it right, yeah. So there's only 16 of them instead of being 20 of them. Are these equally likely? No. So they're not equally likely. So the answering of the question is the writing equally or not equally likely. The values that we did them for all those probabilities, that's the work you're showing to justify your answer. Does that make sense? Okay. All right. A civ class is composed of 21 men, 34 women, which might be a little bit in the count of days on this campus, I'm not sure. Is it? Yeah. All right, and then we're breaking this down into majors. In this particular example, there's 22 education majors, 13 religion majors, 12 science majors, 3 math majors, and 5 English majors. So it says, assuming no one has a double major, and you need that assumption here, right? Because if somebody was double majoring in these two, we would have some problems. We'd have to consider some different options. Um, assuming no one has a double major, if a student is chosen at random, what is the probability the student is female? So, start with, how many students do we have? 55. Alright, so there are 55 students. We need that information in order to create our probabilities, right? So, what is the probability that the student is female? 34 out of 55. Now, when we're specifically asked for a probability, we do want to make sure that it's in reduced form when we're stopping our answer. We didn't need that on the last problem because we were just justifying my answers of equally or not equally likely. So there's no reason to simplify any of those probabilities. This one, this doesn't simplify, but I'm wanting you to make you aware that we would try and simplify this if we could, okay? I think we're about to in another example. We'll see. Uh, how about a science major? 12 out of 55, right? How about English or religion? What would I do to find that? Yeah, so how many English majors are there? Five. And how many religion majors? Thirteen for a grand total of? Eighteen out of? Fifty-five. And again, it still doesn't reduce. But if it could, we would, right? Eighteen out of fifty-five. The other thing that you could do is you could, on this one, recognize, oh, I've got five out of fifty-five plus the 13 out of 55, and then add them together that way. So this is going to be adding probabilities versus adding the number of majors. Either way, it's going to give you the same answer. What about this thing that says neither a math major nor a science major? Everything else. Everything else. So there's actually two ways to do that problem, and I want to show you both ways, because if we had a whole bunch of majors listed, then it's going to definitely tell us that one way is easier than the other. I'm going to show you, on this one, it, it's equally likely, or equally easy to do either one. There's not a, a better choice. 
But one way to talk about this is exactly what Tristan said, is to say everybody else. So if they're not math, they're not science, then they're what in this problem? Religion, education, and English. So how many religion do we have? English and uh, what was the other one? Education, 22. So we could simply add the not one of the majors I care about in this problem together and then write it over 55. If we do that, what do we get? 40. And uh, that reduces, doesn't it? What will that reduce to? Right, 8 over 11. Now let's say that we had been given 10 majors in this class, you know, 10 different groups of students. Well, then the approach that we just did probably isn't the easiest approach, because then I'd have to add eight different majors together and write it over 55. So what could I do instead? Try. Yes. I could take the number that are math and the number in science that are majors. So how many math do I have? And how many science? Twelve. So if I had... Uh, 3 and 12, that gives me 15 out of 55. And I'm going to sort of pause there and recognize that if I wanted to have the not math and science, you know, the opposite of this, so to speak, um, then I would take 1 minus the 15 over 55. But when we're working with this to get a common denominator, that's 55 over 55 minus 15 over 55, right? So what's 55 minus 15? 40. So it's the same 40 over 55, which will reduce to an 8 over 11 as before. Uh, likewise, what you could do is you could say, oh, okay, there are 15 math and science, and I know there's 55 total. That's why that's 55 minus 15 when I did the probabilities, and, and I have 40 other students that I'm referencing. Either way gives you the same answer, but they're, di they're different approaches. Any questions on that one? Okay. A student claims that if a fair coin is tossed and comes up heads five times in a row, then according to the law of large numbers, the probability of tails on the next toss is greater than the probability of heads. What's your reply? False. Okay. Can you tell me why, Al Allie? Because the probability is going to stay the same. It would just be more likely that you're going to get, like, But being Not more likely right. means the same thing. More yeah, likely like, means a higher probability. I don't know what the right wording is, but I know that it's not true. <laughs> okay, I agree. It's not true. Somebody else have a justification that's a little clearer. Every time you flip a coin, the probability Okay, so that's a good thing to, to, to state. I've wrote false twice. I do not know why. Let's try that again. Apparently, I'm very convinced it's false. All right, it's false. So one thing we could say is that every coin flip... has, I'll use your words, Allison, a 50-50 a chance, we'll say chance, of heads or tails. And I'm going to add a little bit to this, and I'm going to say independent of any other, any other flip, right? It, it doesn't make any difference. Whether it flipped coins, the, the coin flipped heads last time, doesn't affect whether it flips coin, heads this time. And that's actually a phrase as being independent. So that's the real answer to this. There's actually another sort of weird thing that she's citing that doesn't make sense. Did anybody catch that? <laughs> you got it, Gunna. Uh, she cited the law of large numbers, and last I checked, five was not especially large. Five kids in your family might be a large number of children, but five as a general rule is not a big number. Okay. So um, we would also probably want to reference that also five isn't large, hence the law of large numbers doesn't apply. Is the law of large numbers a real thing? Yeah, we did it last time. Um, the law of large numbers, though, doesn't apply to a single coin flip. Oh. It would apply to having, like, if we flipped a coin a million times, or even a hundred hundred times. The law of large numbers says that if you flipped it a hundred times, that it would on average be about 50 heads, 50 okay. tails. 
So the law of large numbers doesn't apply to one specific event happening. It, it applies to having a whole bunch of events happen over a span of, of trials. Okay. So that's another thing, too. So the law of large numbers doesn't apply to one specific uh, experimental trial. It applies to the, the mass of trials that were done. So some different things that we can give, us her an ex give her as an example. Number four, the following spinner is spun 100 times. Joe claims that the number four will occur most often because the greatest area of the spinner is covered by the number four. What would you tell Joe about his conjecture? Conjecture means his theory, what he thinks is happening. And what is the probability that four will occur on any spin? First, is Joe right? No. He isn't correct. Why not? So what is it that we should be comparing then instead of the area? The angle. And that's what you're saying. You just didn't have the word angle in there yet. Yeah, this spinner goes through an angle, right? So the area has nothing to do with this particular argument. Now, I could change this argument where the area matters. I could make this a dartboard, right? Yeah, you make it a dartboard, and then we're talking area, and that, that makes a difference. But with a spinner, it's the angle that actually talks about the measurement. So the spinner is unrelated to the area. It is related to the angle measures it spins through. What can you tell me about the angles in this particular diagram? Yeah, each angle here is 90 degrees. Or you could even just say without citing the 90 degrees, you could say is equal because it's the equal part that's the, the valuable part for what we're looking at. It's equal. Hence, each probability is the same. The probability of spinning the number four here is what? One fourth. And it was specifically asking us what is the probability of one of spinning a four. And that would be one fourth. Any questions on that? All right.